Hey guys, this is Nick with Geeks with Cash and this is your next Nick Collectibles. What you're looking at is Black Arachnia from the Beast Wars series of Transformers, uh, also called Black Widow in Japan. So this is the box. Uh, she's got a fairly compact box. It's only about the same width as Cheetor, roughly. Um, so if we go ahead and we take a look and we kind of lean this down, you can kind of see a little bit that it's basically not that wide. It's pretty tight, pretty compact, which is great for storage space. If, like me, you want to keep the box and you want to store things in it later. Uh, if I flip it around to the back, you can see they've got various different poses that she's in and a list of all her accessories. Um, her beast mode actually looks pretty good, I feel like. Uh, it looks like you can do a lot with it. They've got the web that you can stand her on. They've got like her poison anchor thing that's there in the bottom um, that you can use to like hang her from, which is actually a great way of testing whether or not you've done her transformation right because if you have it all together correctly, she can hang from that, which is a pretty awesome feature. Um, it also shows the three faces that she has, her normal anchor shot and uh, her Neo round machine gun thing, which is basically just her legs turned facing the opponent along with her visor that lets her like hack into things and do more cyber spacey things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the box. I'm going to show you the various different pieces on it, um, her stand, and kind of go through her transformation as well. So hang tight. This one looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So here she is out of the box and on the stand. Um, the stand I actually think is a great addition. Uh, it's really dramatic and it's a great way to pose her when you just want to like display her and not be playing around with her. Um, she is a little touch and go to get onto this thing, at least mine is. Um, I kind of put mine to get my webbing together wrong when I initially put it together and I'll kind of go into how to put this together so you guys don't accidentally do the same thing when you get yours. Um, but you, you can see she can hang on there, she can even kind of reach out to the bottom of the stand. Now, unlike Megatron, she did come with all the pieces she needs for this pose. So you do not have to have Dinobot in order to assemble the webbing and to assemble the stand. She comes with her own piece of the stand, which I think is great, because I was pretty disappointed that they charged as much for Megatron as they did, and they didn't include this part. Um, however, it does allow you a little bit more dynamic uh, posing with her because I believe you could probably attach this to the same one as Dinobot and then you could have her on her web either in her robot form or in this form and have the two kind of going at it which I think would be really cool to display uh, and I may actually try that in this review I don't know yet um, but we're gonna go ahead and turn this around just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit more about how she looks on here so if I spin this around Kind of slowly so we don't lose focus and then move her back a little. You can see there she is from a side preview. Now you can see this whole thing, this whole webbing looks a little bit like a satellite dish. So all the pieces of the web are pretty easy to put together. Uh, one has posts on it, one has one side has holes on it. So the side with the pegs goes into the side with the holes and vice versa on it. Um, it only gets a little tricky when you get the last piece in because it's a little hard to work the other half of it underneath the last part while you pin it in on top of the other. Um, this piece right here is kind of part of the stand that has like a, um, a post on it. It's got two prongs and then like an opening on it. That part goes on the front and then it slides back onto the post that's here. And there's a little peg piece there that I actually thought went into the back here where this connects here. And that's where my problem was, because that slid in all the way while I was fiddling with her. And then I had to use all sorts of mechanisms to actually get it out of there and put it back where it belongs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove her from the stand so you can kind of see how this is put together. So you can see what yours is supposed to look like whenever you put it together. So I will just wiggle her a little bit. Pardon my reach. Oh, she's actually on there good. I was having trouble getting her on earlier and she didn't, now she doesn't want to come off. So you can see this part goes onto the peg that's attached to here. This goes from facing inward on that and then this attaches into the back here. So that's how you actually attach the stand together. Like I said, it looks kind of like an old timey satellite dish uh, when you get done. So if it looks like this, then you did it right. If not, God help you if you put that peg in where I put it before. That was a monster pain in the butt to get out. It was not fun. 
it was not fun at all. Um, so that's her on the stand itself. So I'm going to go ahead and get the stand out of the way and I'm going to get things repositioned so I can show you all of her accessories and her. So here she is with all her accessories laid out. Um, you can see a couple of them here. Um, this is her poison anchor, which I'll go ahead and try to lift up so you guys can kind of get a better look at it. You can see it kind of right there. There's the, the Predacon symbol on it. There's a the back. Here's the one with the anchor. It's basically the same thing. It's just got the string attached to it so you can hook that so she can kind of dangle from it. You've got a couple of her faces here. Let me try to get a hold of this one if it'll stop spinning out of control. If I hold that up there, you can see this one's got the light piping on it, which I think looks really, really cool. And then this is her other face where she's not like, you know, screaming or anything like that, but it also doesn't have any kind of light piping on it right there. So you can kind of see that one real quick. Let's suppose that you're right and then this is her cyber visor that has like another little pipe attached to it. Now there's another little piping that comes with this, but I don't really know what that one's for. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty good bank of accessories for it. It shows a good chunk of what you could do in the show. Um, the coolest part is if you rotate her around, let me see if I can turn her around and get this in shot. If you look in the back, and I'm going to try to zoom in on this a little bit. You can start to see that post. Right here. And what that does is that allows this little anchor part to attach in there so she can actually dangle from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to actually get that plugged in there. So here she is with her poison anchor attached. You can see how it's kind of attached onto the back. So this is also a great way to test your transformation technique because if you got everything plugged in right and hope to God everything stayed in together on mine so I'm not embarrassed on film, I will be able to lift her up by this and she will dangle like that. I'm going to try to get more footage of her, like more up in the air, but you can kind of see her coming down like that. But you can let her hang from like various different things. I had her hanging different places. I've been very tempted to like scare a friend of mine who's definitely over at his spiders with her just by hanging her over his head just to amuse myself because I'm terrible that way. But as you can see, she has a lot of really cool accessories. Um, she's got good posability options on it because on top of the anchor and everything like that, she has amazing posability, even in this mode. So we'll go ahead and move this out of the way. We'll kind of go over her and her posability real quick. So, um, if you tilt her, Let's suppose that you're right uh, maybe a little low for this. We'll see. Um, you can kind of see these legs bend like this, and then they also move up and down, and they move around, back and forth. Um, they'll move down like that. So that's really good for her posability here. The other thing is like her mandibles and stuff will open and close. I don't know if I can get you a good angle, but they open and close a little bit, and her head moves. So you can see that'll move up like that, and then you can move it back down. It doesn't really have any side to side motion, um, but overall, I think she looks really, really great in this mode. You can see from the front that you get a real clear look at the black window symbol here. And then when you turn her to the side, you can still see like her legs and stuff and how they fold up. Um, this is clearly the knee joint. That's right where the knee kind of folds over. And then there's the foot. Uh, this part opens up to kind of cover part of her calf which makes it look a little cleaner and a little nicer overall, I feel like. Um, if you look at her on the back, like we showed you before, um, right here is where the gun is. If that attaches here and there's a post here where it attaches, you can suspend her like I just showed you. Um, it's real important to get that right, and that'll let you know if you're on the right track as far as getting her compact the way she needs to be. Um, the detailing on the back and the back of her really I do not think looks that bad. She got a lot of hate when they first started releasing pictures. 
but I suspect a lot of that was just people who had mistransformed her. Even on some of the reviews, I've seen her look like her kibbles, like in a in a weird place. And it that's no fault to anybody who's transformed her. It's really easy to do. I mean, the only reason that I'm fairly confident I got it right is because I tried hanging her from her web. Um, I figure if she didn't lose a part and fall off, then I probably did something right. Um, if you go ahead and rotate her around this way, you can see very much the same thing here. Like there's the other leg right there, and then you can kind of see her hands like down here, and then there's the shoulder arm and stuff like that. Now most of her transformation in this is going to be centered around this back part here. And then this is mostly going to be like part of her torso, and these are going to be her arms. Um, if I lift her up a little bit, you can kind of see the bottom there where her hands are. I don't even have those clasps. They tend to come loose on me, but they have pegs where you can like get them back together. But when you're kind of messing around and posing with her, those have a tendency to kind of come apart a little bit. It's no big deal. It doesn't really hurt the look of the figure at all. Um, overall, I think in her beast mode, she looks pretty great. Um, I'm pretty happy with her um, and think she's a pretty great looking figure. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to work through her transformation. And then I'm going to get you guys some more shots of her um, once she's transformed. So you can kind of see her that way too. So stick around. So I've got her changed around a little bit more. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work through her transformation at this point. I'm going to apologize if this looks like this is edited together kind of janky. But I'm having trouble with my lighting on her. Um, even with a monstrous amount of lighting, she was kind of hard to light. So we're going to go ahead and start going through the transformation. I'm going to do my best to kind of keep this in frame and kind of keep this in focus the best I can. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the back. Now the part of this that I'm doing, the reason I'm doing this is because I need to separate her gun first and that kind of opens up the rest of her making her much easier to transform. So what we're going to do is we're going to just reach, we're going to reach around here. We're going to lift that part up that removes that post. And then you can just pull that down. And then that pulls that out. So this is the actual gun. I'm going to do that. And move that like that. And then these little things can kind of come down. And that is her gun. Just like that. So we're going to move that to the side because that part's done. See, you already got a gun done. Hard part's over, right? Well, no, not really. But the hard part's really not that hard. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two pieces and I'm going to lift these up. Like that and like that. So that makes it easier to kind of move her legs out, which is where the bulk of her transformation actually is, believe it or not. And it's also the hardest part to get back when you're transforming her, which is why it's kind of good to kind of do a sort of a, a test when you get her transformed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn her to the side and I'm going to kick one of her legs out like that. We move to the other side. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna move to this side and then try to work here the best I can. So we're gonna take this and move this up like that. And this piece goes in here. And snaps in like that. Okay? So this will lift up like so. And then we'll basically just do that to pop the toe out. And then when you straighten it, there's her leg. So we turn around and we try to do the same thing on this side, right here. So I'm going to take this leg and I'm going to move this out of the way because these things are notorious for getting in the way. So you can see this. So that'll come out. This will move up. This will get pushed back. 
and this part is very hard to get on film, I apologize, and snap into there. That will lift up, and that will go like that, and then you can straighten her leg. So you're pretty much most of the way through her transformation at this point. At this point, you can move her legs down like so, flip her over, and then we can move her arms out of the way. So that's what we're going to do next, is just kind of get our arms moved out. Hold on to this so I get a brace, because I'm doing this on camera, and just move that out of the way, right? Like that. This part goes down here, and this turns around like that. Let me see if I can lift her up and show this. Yeah, okay. So that'll go down, like so. And this will go up. And attach there. So that is the main part of her actual torso. Now, the only part in here that's a little tricky at this point is the head. So if we turn this around to the side, you can see there's her head. So, this will come up, and this whole piece just kind of go pushes through here, and this is probably the most awkward part, if I'm quite honest, is getting that worked out, because this comes out of here, like that, and that brings the head with it. So you can see that right there. So that comes down like that. And there you can see is her chest and her head right there. So you're pretty much almost done. Yarn move out and around. And you want to figure out how to position for yourself. Her legs, because these things are kind of everywhere on her. I generally just kind of kick them back, just to kind of get them out of the way. At least for right now. And the last piece is getting this realign. So for that, that simply collapses in like that. And you were done. That is it. That is her entire transformation. So I'm going to move her where I can get better shots of her in this mode for you. Um, but that's pretty much her transformation, guys. It's really basic. It's really simple. It's actually pretty fun. It makes her very playable, which some of these I feel like get so complicated that a lot of times they're not quite as fun to transform. Um, so it's good to see that some of these are just flat out fun to transform. So here she is pretty much on a stand after we've gotten her transformed. I went ahead and changed out one of her faces for the one with the light piping because I thought it looked better with her, uh, her gun modes, her arm guns, uh, her neo round machine gun as they call it. Um, if we go ahead and turn her, we'll take a look. Let's just take a closer look at her real quick first. So you can see she's got really good detailing here. In the chest, and the torso, and the arms, and everything like that. They did a really, really good job with her. But if we go ahead and zoom out here a little bit, just going to rotate her around, you can kind of see... There's her arms and like a little bit of a gap that you can see kind of in the torso. If we move these back a little bit, start to turn these around. Which is how she would normally just kind of stand. You can kind of see there's a small gap there. 
It's nothing major. It's not too distracting. It's just kind of how the figure is. Um, and if we go ahead and continue to turn her around, you can see the back along with the Black Widow, uh, the Black Widow symbol on the back, and all the little piping for like the, all the little eyes and stuff, and her um, and her um, spider mode on the back of her head. So that's pretty much her in a nutshell. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these back and try to get her in a few more poses for you guys and maybe try to get some more images of her just kind of you know rotating around doing her thing so you guys can kind of just get a good solid look at her um i think she's totally worth the price point i think she's worth the money i think she's a lot of fun she's probably honestly speaking she is my favorite out of the beast wars right now um she's probably my absolute favorite out of all of them she's just got a ton of cool gimmicks that allowed her more posability, more flexibility in play. She's got a fun, easy transformation. I think she looks great in both modes. Um, your mileage can vary, but for my money, I think she looks fantastic. But we'll get some more shots and wrap this up. And you know what, guys? Thanks for watching.